Greek calls. Okay, so uh, as I told you, this is a new format for us. I wanted to launch this uh, new format on YouTube, uh, like to show some Italian, because here in Italy, we are talking a, a, a lot about KOLs and uh, stars in China, and, uh, but it's all about uh, selling. <laughs> Like uh, companies want to want to sell some products, uh, and so uh, they talk about this. But no one is talking about uh, you know the story of some people, uh, may, maybe also foreigners that went to China and uh, became like uh, more and more famous. So I wanted to to focus more on this and uh, to show our fans a little bit of the uh, the show business environment and how to get in it and. Uh, uh, what's it like uh, and all, the, all this kind of information and um, just have a chat with you guys uh, since uh, you're friends anyway and uh, so it, it's nice to to have a chat and it's so never in my life until when I started learning Chinese to like go off and be an actor in China or whatever never in my life or even before that when I just started learning Chinese never in my life did I think that I would meet so many Italians in this that, process that, that's what Mohammed also said like at a, at a certain point in the interview, he said, okay, um, in Beijing, there are a lot of people from around the world that are, uh, you know, I have uh, Latino friends, I have uh, American friends, I have Asian friends. And, uh, you know, I was living with you and we were hanging, hanging out with too many Italians. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, my personal trainer right now is an Italian woman here in Taipei. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but there, there are more and more, more and more Italians in China. Like when I was in, in China, I don't know, the consulate or the embassy said we are about like five to 10,000. But I think now there are more, more of them, more and more because, you know, opportunities and uh, word of mouth, you know, people saying, mm -hmm. okay, if you go to China, you're going to find a job, you're going to find this and that, like the economy is, uh, is booming and whatever. Uh, yeah, but we are nice people, like the majority. There are, uh, sure. I mean, yeah. there's a reason that, like, I mean, there's so many people from all over the world, but like the majority of my friends are Italian. And I mean, maybe we just gravitate towards each other more. Maybe I make really good pineapple pizza, and that's why everybody. <laughs> Um, okay, mean, I'm gonna can. cut. I'm gonna <laughs> cut this part of. The <laughs> Even in the people need to know. The people need to know. He's censoring me. Okay, I'm gonna say something now that uh, I never said to any of my friends. But one oh. time we made pizza in Japan when I was living in a family there, and uh, there was this um, uh, this madam from Australia. She was a Japanese uh, Australian. And, uh, mm -hmm. and she made, like, we were making pizza, and she made a pizza, uh, like an Australian pizza with pineapple mm -hmm. and bacon. And I ate that, and I thought, well, this is not bad. This is actually Did you think it was good at all, though? Yeah? Did you think it was good at all? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yes. You I thought it was th good? Yeah, I thought that that was actually okay. Like, hey, not... Anto, I got to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I recorded that. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna put this on the on the interview. <laughs> Expose him I, because you know when you talk yeah, about you uh, pineapple pizza, people are gonna comment and flame the video, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be good. You want something very funny though? Like even though pineapple pizza is very popular in America, it was made in Canada. Oh really? Yeah, they shift the blame on us, just like with Justin Bieber. Ah, okay. That that madam was, was telling me it was the Australian pizza. I don't know. Maybe with the bacon, the bacon is a, uh, it's Australian. I don't know. Anyway, it's not that bad. Like mm. there's there's worse things in in this world to eat. I, like I don't know, stinky tofu or shit. <laughs> I do like stinky tofu. I used to hate it, and then I tried it, and now I crave it. Like I'll be doing something. I'm like, I really want some stinky tofu right now. Yeah, I tried it once, but I mm. think that was, it, it was not the real stinky tofu because it was stinky, but it had no flavor while, while I was eating it. But uh, a lot of people told me, nah, actually, the flavor is very good. So I think yeah. I have to try it again. It's like man xiang de, you know, like if you get like a good amount of like spice with it, it could be like very like savory, very like salty, very like it, it can be flavor flavorful if done right. If done bad, whoo, whoo, no. Yeah, the, the stink, I, I cannot stand it though. Like, it's like, it reminds me of my cat's pee. 
Really, it reminds me of actual poop. Like, I don't want to, like, not to be mean, but it actually smells like poop to me. Yeah, yeah, it's, some, something like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Zach, we didn't even introduce you. Uh, no, do you want to sorry. introduce yourself a little, uh, like, uh, what's your name? How old are you? What, uh, whatever you want to say about yourself. What sure, you sure. Um, I, will, I will first do a little bit in Chinese to show people at home. You too can speak fluent Chinese if you want to. Yeah, yeah um, we're going to talk about <laughs> that because uh, <laughs> you're, you're one of the most amazing people like Chinese uh, Chinese speaking person that I ever met because like you never studied Chinese but you speak <laughs> Chinese <laughs> yeah. so well, and like and it's it's a very strong testament to well we can get into that later but um it's more important to know how to use it than to speak it properly properly but that's that's something we can talk about later yeah 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 um, so. Hello, 各位大家好，我的名字是叫左右，我是来自美国的中部，我老家的人口就是两百个人。啊、uh, ，我是一位演员，我已经是三十岁。嗯、um, ，so hello everyone, my name is uh 左右 in Chinese, left and right, and then um in English is Zach Ireland, and I am from a tiny town in the middle of nowhere, America, and its population about two hundred people. And I am an actor in uh in the world, and I'm about thirty years old. Not about, I am thirty years old. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to ask you a question. How did you come up with the name Zoyo? Because actually, you said about 30 years old, and you would say <laughs> Zoyo in, in, in Chinese. Like, Chinese. Zoyo, yeah. like Zoyo, it, mean, it means like something about, or uh, yeah. Uh, well, how did you come up with it? You know, when I moved to Beijing, I saw that uh, there were so, like, there's so much traffic because it's a huge population, right? And because of that, I was also worried that there were a lot of traffic accidents. So I was walking down the street one day and I was really worried like, man, if I get hit by a car and both of my legs fall off, like if I go to the doctor, what if the doctor doesn't know the difference between left and right? And what if he puts my legs on backwards? The middle look absolutely ridiculous. So what I did is I got two tattoos on my feet. I got left and right so that if I go to the doctor, like, you know. Are you sure it was not for yourself to remember which one is which? <laughs> It's, um, the, you know, the real story is actually very boring. Um, it's from a poem. In the end of it, they say, be dexterous and deft. Never mix your right foot from your left. The whole thing is about travel. And um, my mom and I, like, uh, really like the poem. We always talk about it in uh, very important moments in our lives. And it's about, like, adventure and growing up. And Beijing was my first really big adventure, um, a huge growing up stage in my life. And so I got it to remember that. And then um, none that's of my friends not could... boring. That's interesting. It's... Uh, it's... It's a little yeah, bit, but you know what? It's, it's, it's not funny. Di it's deeper than the other one, but still, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. And, and so, uh, when did you when did you move to China? Um, so I went to study abroad in Beijing in um, 2011, about February 2011. But I moved moved to Beijing in 2013, around the same time. And uh, so you moved like uh, in the first place you went to study and then you started uh, right away with the acting and uh, like it was the, the goal for you to go to China to, for, for uh, doing some acting uh, profession or uh, what did you do? Also, so for me, like I, um, I've been an actor for a really long time. I'm 30 years old, but I have been studying acting or working as a professional actor in some sort of regard for about 16 years. And uh, so like China comes in there like actually like right in the middle. So um, I ended up going to China because I, I made a dumb joke about learning Chinese from my professor and he was like, yeah, you should do that. Like, who knows? If you learn Chinese, you could be a famous actor in China someday. I'm like, mm, okay, yeah, like that'll ever happen. Like I'm, I'm white, like there aren't white actors in China. Are you still in and touch so, with this teacher? I am, I am. And like, he constantly is like, I was right. I knew it. <laughs> I, I knew it the entire time. And like to this day, whenever I get frustrated with Chinese, I look to the sky and I'm like, Dr. J. Scott Chipman, why did you do this to me? Because anyone who studies Chinese knows that like you never stop learning. It's so difficult. But um, so I wanted, I just took Chinese for a year and then I wanted to study abroad and I actually wanted to either go to France or Italy, but both of these two places were, were too expensive. But I really wanted to go to Italy uh, or France because your guys' acting style is very unique, great history, all this sort of stuff. And my professor is like, well, why not China? And I was like, well, I mean, why not China? I mean, I've studied it for a year. And he's like, we can get you a scholarship. And I'm like, great, I'm poor, let's do that. And so then um, I ended up getting a scholarship, going to China. And then 
when I was there, I, because I'm from a town of 200 people, and I met people from all over the world, all over the world. And, um, you know, I'm in Beijing, it's this huge city, it's so exciting. And then I also found that their media there is booming, like it's growing so quickly. But at that time, the people who were there doing media or who were just doing acting and stuff, there, one, were not many professionally trained actors. Like there weren't, there was like one or two that I knew of. And two, they didn't really speak Chinese that great. So what you had is a lot of like English teachers or study abroad students. And so I realized I was like, oh wait, there aren't people from European backgrounds doing this. I'm a trained actor. I speak Chinese. Like this is absolutely perfect. And so I went back and I graduated and then immediately after, um, well not immediately, immediately, but like six months after I went back to Beijing and I started my career. And, and at that point, my goal was to, and still is, to be the Jackie Chan of China. <laughs> how did you get in the business? Like, uh, how did you begin? Uh, what did you do to get, to get in the show business? Uh, in China, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, yeah. Um, so, uh, it's, it's so, it's a story that will probably never exist again. But, um, so my original plan was to go to China, work as an English teacher for five years, pay off my student loans because in America, ugh, it, it's garbage. It's hot buttered garbage. Don't go, don't go to America. It's canceled, canceled right now. Um, but it's very expensive to go to school there. And so my plan was to go there, work off money, like teach English, pay off my student loans. Well, um, I get to Beijing and like, I get off the plane and right away, like I'm talking within 24 hours, I had one English teaching job. Two days later, I had another English teaching job. But then within a week, because my plan was, I want to learn Chinese better so that when I go on TV, like an act, I can actually do this sort of stuff. Well, about a week or two later, a friend of mine submits me for a, they're doing this talk show. It's called uh, Fanny Moshu, which is they're looking for, it's like a job hunting job, <coughs> a job hunting talk show. And they submit me without me knowing because they're doing uh, a special episode where they're looking for study abroad students from all over China. It was a Chinese so they, friend who did it? Uh, it was actually a French friend. Oh, okay. okay. No, it was, it was very random, but yeah, a French friend submitted me. <laughs> and um, then from, cause they had, they had something like a couple thousand submissions, like something like 10,000 submissions. And then they narrowed it down to 700 people. And then those 700 people were asked to send in a videotape. So, you know, like my friend tells me about it. I'm like, cool. So I send him a, a videotape. So then from those 700 people, they narrow it down to about 50. And then from those 50 people, they then narrow it down to about 20 who do a person-to-person uh, -person interview, like in a giant group. And then from those, they narrow it down to eight. And then those eight, they split into two groups of four. So you had four people go on one episode, then you had four people go on the other. And so I went on the show made an absolute fool of myself, completely hated it. Um, I was, it was very misrepresented. It was very like, just, it was bad, but it's still out there. But I come off looking okay enough, but man, I had terrible Chinese and the host really made fun of me. Everyone made fun of me. And then I was like, I've only been learning Chinese for like six months. Why are you guys being so mean? And then they was like, oh my God, only six months. Wow, you don't want to how it. Your Chinese is perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's wow, great. And then, um, Oddly enough, you, you know Hoda, right? She knew it. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Egyptian, Egyptian Hoda. Yeah, yeah. She was on that show with me, and she was like, "Wow, you're a really nice guy. You, you're very good at this. Yeah, your Chinese is garbage, but whatever, we'll fix it. Why don't you come on this show with me?" And then she brought me onto another show, and then the producers there brought me onto another show, and then about two months later, I had my first major audition, and I had to quit English teaching entirely. And then from then on out, it's been acting, 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 acting. Or talk shows. Or whatever random stuff. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the show that we met on, like the Fei Zhen Shu, Hui Tan, that uh, you, you did for a couple of seasons, I guess. Or three. Yeah, I did that for um, two seasons. Um, do you want me to give a little bit of my resume? or? No, no, it's okay. okay. Well, uh, I, I, I just wanted to... Um, maybe we can talk about what you're doing now. I saw that uh, I saw that you're doing like a show that is like exploding, is booming. Like you, you made a billion billion views on the last episode. What, what was it? So, um, so when you look at the numbers, they're just 
truthfully wild, like just absolutely insane. Because like, so the current number right now for the amount of views that the whole season has got, not episode to episode. What's the, the name of the show? It's called Gui Chui Dong Zhi Long Ning Mi Ku. So Gui Chui Dong is the name of the series, but every season is a different like uh, story. So I'm in season two and that's called Long Ning Mi Ku. And um, I can give you a link to that. And if you want to put it in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah I will. I will put like a short video and I'll, I'll like when you are appearing and uh and yeah. also well and what's cool on this is also they do have english subtitles for um people who may not be able to read uh, oh that's nice what are you doing he is me he is it's a kitaski ribenok not the one we brush no so this show is uh currently it's for online online broadcasting, it's the number two rated show in China. And in total, we have 1.1, so 1 billion, 170 million views. That's a lot. And like, it, oh, it's so many. And it's like blowing up and like, it's really cool. Like, I really, really love this story. Um, the director is the director of the very first project I ever worked on in China. And, um, you know, the cast is really great. The story is really fantastic. And um, I have a very substantial part in it. And it's, um, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see like uh, my career prog progressing because sometimes when you're an actor, you're like, man, like, is it ever gonna work out? Like, is it ever like, when is my break gonna come, blah, blah, blah. And then you do something that's really big and then it kind of pitters out for a bit. Then you do something that's bigger and it pitters out for a bit. And then like, you do something that's really, really big and there's a global pandemic. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, because of the pandemic, uh, pandemic, more people are gonna look at it. You know, they are gonna watch oh it. I can, okay, okay, this this bit we might have to cut out a little bit, uh, or I'll Yo. say like this: There's a huge, 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 huge director. Um, so this person, who we can't air that, but this person, um, their casting director called me up about a week and a half ago, and they were like, "Hey, we saw you in Lonely Miku." Uh, would you like to come and, you know, we're going to write this part in for you in this current movie that we're on. It's only going to be nine scenes, but it's going to be a very bit part because we like what you did. So um, would you be interested? And I was That's like, cool. of course I would. And then I'm like, oh, but I can't go. So um, anyway, I put them in contact Wh with Brian. Why not? Because they're, fi they're filming right now. And so I can't ah. fly into uh, Beijing because I'm not. You I'm didn't not ask them like uh, to, to give you some special help or something to... to... You know, when you have connections. Smuggle me on a banana boat. That'll work out perfectly. <laughs> Please. Anyway, so you, you made a lot of talk shows, mm -hmm. uh, TV shows, movies. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you like to do the most? Um, I mean, honestly, like... It go, there's something that I enjoy from every project I work on. Like there is some stuff that I've been on, I'm like, mm, this isn't so great. But you know, um, what I really, really like about my job and what, what's interesting is because I studied acting for such a long time, but it turns out uh, I'm mildly entertaining, I guess, or whatever, you can put me on front of a camera, I could tell a couple jokes and do a funny dance and make some faces. So because of this, I do a lot of like travel shows. And what I love about this is like with a travel show, you never know what's going to happen, especially in China. Like, man, I did this one thing for CCTV where they have me interviewing like um, younger people in China to talk about what they're doing. And I ended up interviewing a female pilot and she's one of only a hundred in China and she owns her own helicopter. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So clearly we're going to fly somewhere. They put me in a helicopter and flew me over the Great Wall. I'm from a town of 200 people. Never in my life did I ever think that that would happen. Like, it's truthfully wild. Um, I also like, um, you know, the, the last project I worked on, I really, really loved because they hooked me up to all these wires and like the story was really great and they had me flying all around like I was in a Kung Fu movie. Um, I, I shot a Kung Fu movie last year, which is oh. very fun. Wait, what are you doing, um, some moves? So I don't know Kung Fu, and my, which is great because my character isn't supposed to know Kung Fu, but he's trying to learn Kung Fu the entire time. But what's interesting with this story is, and I don't really care if they find out that I say this or not, but um, the sometimes with certain scripts, they're not um, as good as other scripts. Uh, they're like, 
you know, they're put together in different ways. And so this show had a lot of plot holes in it. And so halfway through, I realized that, because I was like reading the script, I'm like, this doesn't make sense because like, th like this part of the story doesn't match with this part of the story, what's going on. And then I was talking with the director and then it, it clicked in my head. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in a bad Kung Fu movie. I'm in, a, <laughs> I'm in a bad Kung Fu movie, which like, when I was younger, that would probably really upset me. But now that I'm older, it's like, because you know those kung fu movies from the 80s where the story isn't that great, the acting's really weird, everyone's dubbed. For me, it's like total freedom because I get to do whatever I want. And like, if I'm goofy, it's just goofy. And so like, I got to be just this wild, crazy, doesn't make sense sort of character, which is really fun. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but. Is there, is there a show that you like, like the, the most? The show that I like the most is actually the one that just came out. Okay. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. Um, I really, really, really love another show I did called Feng Ren Yuan, which is sort of like a sci-fi thriller thing. Um, I don't really have many projects that I point to and say, oh, I don't like that, or oh, I'm not proud of that. Okay, what I think is uh, very, um, very amazing about you is that like, maybe many people maybe believe that um, if you want to, to do so, uh, such a job in China, you have to speak like perfect Chinese. I mean, speaking perfect Chinese, it also means that like, to, to speak the perfect tones, the perfect intonation, perfect pronunciation. But is I found out like through you that is this is not true. <laughs> like uh, what, what you, I love about you, Zach, is you speak garbage Chinese, but everyone still loves you. <laughs> it, it like it became like uh, your characteristic, your feature, like uh, your unique feature, and. Uh, like people maybe also loved you because of that because your of your way of uh, interpreting chinese and uh, how <laughs> how you use it to, to your own advantage sometimes you make i don't know stupid jokes with chinese that uh, like uh, nobody understands but uh, everybody knows it's funny so so we laugh but, <laughs> so if you think that um, you need to know like perfect chinese to to be an actor or to work in china like you're wrong like just go yeah. go watch what Zach mm -hmm. was doing. <laughs> like have some personality, and uh, you're gonna go like really really fine. But our strength is where? It's we give gifts. We usually open a few gifts on friends. He just said on friends. Open. 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 很尴尬，都很尴尴尬尬，还有那个很奇奇怪怪。因为一旦打开，如果不喜欢，那个笑容会。对对对，对对对因为因为，对，就是。Well, and that's the biggest thing that you say is like have personality, right? Um, because like, you know, I have several friends who, like, I, I've had friends get frustrated that maybe their career isn't doing as well as mine, or they they're constantly comparing themselves to other people. But the thing is, is like it isn't beneficial to compare yourself to another person, like with anything, like, you know, not to get all Lady Gaga touchy feely or anything, but I just, I don't find it useful, you know, but specifically in this regard, I would tell my friends, I'm like, okay, there's, there's two things that you're really not looking at. One, I went to university. I have a BFA in acting. I'm very, very, very good at acting. Like I've been, because I've been doing it for 16 years. I've been studying for so long. I went to a very good university. I worked with very good directors. I've been learning for such a long time. If you do anything for 16 years, you're gonna get good at it, I hope. But two, the biggest thing that I tell people is like, if you're going to do this, if you're going to be going on talk shows or if you're going to be acting, like they're not going to hire you as an Italian, you as a Brazilian, you as an American because you speak really good Chinese. Because like, that's the standard, you have to be understood. But from there, you have to be special in some sort of regard. And I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell, I'll tell this secret to my friends who are frustrated. I'll tell it to anybody. You know who speaks really, really good Chinese? Chinese people. They're so good at it. Like they nailed it. They're really, really good at it. Because they've been doing it for more than 16 years. And like I said, if you do anything for more than 16 years, you better be good at it. And so I think people, they, they focus so much on learning the language, but when you're doing something in entertainment, like, I mean, Sofia Fegata, for example, Jackie Chan, for example, they don't have amazing English, but they're good actors. They're very entertaining. And when you speak a language, the point is, does this person understand me? But also, do they want to talk to me?
and no one's gonna wanna talk to you if you're an asshole. But if you make funny jokes and you're a cute person, then it works out. I think that's the most precious advice that uh, <laughs> that I ever heard. Uh, I wish I, I wish I knew it before. Anyway, uh, what about um, the social media world in China? How do you deal with that? Like I saw that you have uh, almost uh, three hundred thousand fans on Weibo and uh, thirty thousand on Instagram. Um, what, what's your favorite platform? Uh, how do you use it? Uh, like, uh, is it something you really care about or is it something that you do for fun? Like, Man, I keep going back and forth with it. Cause like, oh man, uh, if I wasn't an actor, I probably would be completely off of social media. But because like, that is what I do and that's where I make a majority, like I make all of my money through entertainment. Like that's where I make all of my money. And so because of the world we live in now, we have to be, somehow accessible to our fan base, right? Um, and so the platform I probably use the most would be Weibo and Instagram. Instagram for me, because like I, I understand it, I can interact with a more global platform. Also, if like when people in um, other areas of the world wanna contact me for work, they can contact me through Instagram, right? Um, for Weibo, I use it so I can interact with my Chinese fans. Um, but you know, there's ups and downsides to it as well, because when you have like 300,000 followers, right? Man, I post, I post a photo and like on the exact same photo, people are like, oh my God, you're so fat. You've gotten so much, you've gained so much weight. Your hairline looks like shit. Oh, your glasses are terrible. And the same photo people are like, oh, you're so skinny. You need to take care of yourself, you're gaining too much weight. And it's just, it's this really weird sort of back and forth and then like, I'll, especially if something like really politically sensitive happens and all of a sudden people start searching who are the Americans on Weibo and then people will like run to my Weibo and they'll start yelling at me about how like Trump did this and Trump did that and like man I tell you what like I'll, I post some terrible shit about Trump I call him like Salampu because like he's Salam and I find that funny and but then like people are like oh you love Trump so much I'm like clearly I don't and so you know you get a lot of like uh, we call it dying on the internet um, on, I quit playing on Douyin actually because uh, I would post these videos and because like people can scroll through and so you get people who just like land on your page and they may not be a fan so I quit going because I got too many racist comments and I was like I'm not gonna play uh, with you guys anyway hmm <laughs> yeah. I was like well fine I'm not gonna play with you um, but do you have yeah, any uh, anecdote like about like the relationship between you and some fans? I don't know, like you receive uh, gifts or uh, is there some, uh, I don't know if there, there was some, some time that uh, they, they tried to find out where you were and uh, like try to reach you or uh, I don't know, some, something like this. Do you have any story about this kind of stuff? I, I have a lot and actually this is what keeps me going back to Wave Walk because like sometimes if because I always have to remember, like, when I say I get, like, a racist comment or some sort of rude comment, it's, like, one comment, and then I have, like, 50 people defending me immediately. But there is something interesting about being a social media or a person with a larger social media platform where that one mean comment sticks out, and sometimes you forget about all the good things. Yeah. So, like, man, oh, I, I have, like, probably the most emotional thing that ever happened to me was we had this big meet and greet. And then I got this really, really long handwritten letter from a fan talking about how um, when we were at the meet and greet, she like had this mask on and she had these glasses and there was a huge crowd around me and we had to leave early. And then I saw that she had like this photograph and I could see that she really wanted me to sign it, but she was too afraid to ask. So like I stopped like the security that was around me. I'm like, hey, like I want to talk to her really quick. So I like went back, talked to her signed her photograph she didn't say anything but I was like do you want a hug and she just kind of goes and like puts her <laughs> arms out so I hug her okay. and then it, it was adorable but then later she sends me this like letter and I still have it um but it was like this huge long thing about um you know she had suffered from depression for a very long time and uh it she had a hard time like leaving her room and she really contemplated suicide for a long time and what helped her get through um all of this was like watching like these these shows that we were on because we were this really good group of friends and we seemed to be friends in really in real life which we are and you know she really like it gave her hope that one day she could have that 
And then one day on the show, um, I like was talk. We were talking about we had an episode about depression, and uh, I said, you know, like don't believe these thoughts that keep you locked away in your room because you're so special. Like the world really needs a person like you. And she said that that episode is what kept her from committing suicide. And I read this letter and it was like, holy shit, like I'm a little idiot from the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. But like to have an impact on a person like that, it was very, very heartfelt. Heart, heartwarming, yeah. Very heartwarming. Mm, do you have any suggestion for uh, any foreigner that wants to start now? Like uh, if I was a... Uh, an Italian guy going to China now and uh, wanted to go there acting or I wanted to, to start getting famous uh, and uh, uh, work in the show business. So what, what would you tell me to do? You know, gone are the days when it was enough to be white and go to China. Gone are the days where it was enough to be white and speak good Chinese. Like, the, like those days are completely gone because... I mean, the people that you're seeing now who are the people that you're interviewing, like, I mean, Muhammad is a famous reporter. Um, if you get Brian, like, you know, he's a, a very adorable, adorable, like little white dude from Argentina who is very, very fit and speaks fun Chinese. But oh my God, he works so hard. Like, so to answer your question, for someone who wants to start doing this sort of stuff, look at, or someone who wants to be famous, look at why you want to be famous. Do you want to be famous because you're a really good cook? Do you want to be famous because you really enjoy acting? Do you want to be famous for creating like amazing doing and TikTok videos or like for having a travel business? Like look at specifically why you want to be famous. If your answer is I want to be famous because I want to be famous, I'm sorry, it's not for you. Like make a sex tape, you know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> I mean <laughs> you're not gonna be famous anyway because there are so many. Uh, so many, yeah. So what you're you're saying is like, uh, get good, get very good at what you're mm -hmm. doing, whatever is it that you're doing, so that people will notice you. So you're not gonna be famous because you want to be famous, but because you're good at what you do. Yeah, work work on your Chinese. Um, figure out why you want to do this and also figure out what fame would bring you that that's a uh, good advice i think okay so thank you for everything and uh, i think that uh, i cannot compliment you enough on your background and i i don't uh, like in oh, life okay. i mean this background yeah this background also <laughs> and uh, it was a very nice uh, talk uh I think that our audience are going to enjoy it. And uh, I think that uh, now you will have a larger fan base even in Italy. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much again. Okay.